when we read this, what we tend to do is go home and say, you see that? Christ, yo, most high, Christ, man, woman. You got to do When you send it to this American-minded black woman, it goes straight out the door. She turns straight into uh, that, that satellite in her head that's been set up for over 500 years in, in her head. It turned right on, and you get Woody Lynch. you from them from, from the fakers out there. This is what's going to separate you from them that are walking according to this faith 
and the people that are not walking according to this faith. And when that sky crack, you do not want to be on the side of, 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 of these individuals who want to run around and scream rhetoric, but not follow what the Bible says. First Corinthians chapter one, verse 10. Bring it out. Now I beseech you brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye, sh that ye all speak the same thing. And so through Paul, Christ is telling us that we all gotta speak the same thing. So when you're amongst this gathering, if brothers ain't speaking the same thing, something wrong. So, something is off. You got a question, what is off? All right, because it looks like your friend just go all the way around the border, right? Right, so are you are those detachable fringes or? Okay, I mean, you gotta do what you gotta do in the beginning. But Paul is letting us know here that we all gotta speak the same thing. You understand that? So go back to Matthew chapter five real quick. Because if that if that doctrine, if that's that's just one part of the scriptures that are not or possibly not being pushed and upheld at the standard that the Bible is asking us to uphold it. So what do they congregate? Do they congregate today? Sometimes, yeah. See that? The Bible don't say sometimes. Every six days is a what? Yeah, it's, it's a Sabbath. See? Like the brother went over, it's a, it's a holy convocation. Uh, read that again. Yeah. Let your read light. First, yeah, read that. Let your Matthew chapter five verse sixteen. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good work. So your wife, she need to continuously see your good works. Right. She need to see you amongst a congregation of men that are in order. When she see you following and being in accordance with a congregation of men that are in order, if she ain't the devil the Bible speak of, you got a better chance of her following and getting on one accord with you. Like right. this brother. This brother wife wasn't all, was your wife always here? No. <laughs> but he never quit. He kept coming. He kept laboring. He kept showing that righteous example. Now he got his whole family here. So that's what it's going to take for you. It ain't just going to come because you know and because you, you you go home and you try to hammer it because there ain't no magic scriptures in this bible that we can just run to and say see this is what this is what the bible says yeah when we read in first corinthians get that in first corinthians the order get that real quick when we read this what we tend to do is go home and say you see that christ yo most high christ man woman you got to look and a lot, and that, that right then when, when you send it to this American minded black woman, it goes straight out the door. She turns straight into uh that, that satellite in her head that's been set up for over five hundred years in her, in her head, it turned right on and you get Witty Lynch. Read that. First Corinthians chapter eleven, verse three. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. Hey sister. Hey sister, let me speak to you for a minute. Don't hey, let me talk to you for a minute. What's your name, sis? What's your name? Brenda, come in for a minute, Brenda. I want to see if you agree with this right here. You, re you read the Bible? Yes, sir. Sometime, all the time. Sometimes. Sometimes. I want to see if you, if you read this. Read this right here. First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. So the head of every man is Christ, right? Come on. And the head of a woman is the man. And the head of a woman is a what? You agree with that? Yes. Read. And the head of Christ is God. And the head of Christ is God. So, as a godly man, what you're supposed to do is set that example. Like, you can't set it sometimes. So, setting, it, setting that example sometimes is going to the Sabbath with these brothers sometimes. So, if she see you go sometimes, guess how she thinking in her mind? Bring it up. I'm going to go sometime. Brother, what's your nationality? Black. You black? Sister, what's your nationality, Miss Brenda? Black. What's your nationality? Black. I want all y'all to look at each other's shirts. And what tell me what color y'all shirts is. Black. Bring it out! What color it is? Black. Black. Now what's your nationality? Black. Black. So look at your shirt again. Are you black? Yes. No, you're not black. Look at your skin. Is your skin black? I'm brown. What? Brown. What about you? You brown? brown. So what does what that what does that term black come from? You see what your job is as a repentant Israelite? It's to teach our brothers and sisters that you are not black. Right. You are not African American. That is a lie. You are an Israelite according to the Bible. Turn, That's your, flyer right. Turn your flyer over. On your flyer, you're going to see the 12 tribes of Israel right down there at the bottom. They are listed. On the right is the name that God gave you. 
On the left is the name that you've acquired in slavery, African American, two white men. Now, most people will say, well, if I ain't black, I'm African American. I just told you that's, that's two white men. Leo Scipio Africanus and America Vespucci. So if you ain't black and you can't be two white men, who are you? Who are yes. you, Miss Brenda? Who are you now? Because you've been reading the Bible, right? Brenda. The Bible, the Bible, yeah, your name is Brenda, mm -hmm. but who are you? What nation of people do right. you come from? Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right, I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Shalom. My familia is the 12. You're not black. Your shirt is black. My boots are black. His shirt is black. His shirt is black. We ain't black. That's a lie that we've learned in this country. That's right. We've learned that we're African American. That is a lie. Right. That is Leo Scipio Africanus, a man that conquered Hannibal during the Second Punic War in Africa, with the, which got, which is how Africa got his name, Africa, from the man named Africanus and Leo Scipio, uh, what's his name? America uh, Vespucci. America Vespucci here in America. That's Those it. are two white men. So when you say, yeah, I'm African American, you're saying, I come from the sperm of two white men. Do Can you come from the sperm of two white men? Can you can two white men put their sperm together and produce life? So how could you be African American? How could you be black? What you're gonna realize that this Bible explains who you are. Get out Isaiah chapter one real quick. Bring it up. The Bible is gonna tell you who you are. Because our oppressors damn so ain't gonna tell you who you are. You know why? To tell you who you are and for us to continue to raise up in the numbers that we're raising up means the destruction of his existence. Right. Means his, his rulership is over with. Right. Read what you got. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 3. Bring it up. The ox knoweth his owner. You know what an ox is. We all, y'all here in, in the Carolinas. Y'all all have seen oxen, right? You take an ox, or uh, read on, read on. We'll, we'll, we'll get to it. Read that. The ox knoweth his owner. It says the ox knows his owner. We're talking about an animal. Read. And the ass, his master's crib. The ass is a donkey. He knows where his master's crib is. Read. But Israel. But who? But Israel. Look at this sign right here again. Look on your flyers. It says what? But Israel. But Israel. The children of Israel. The, the children that God chose to be his particular special people, the children of Israel, does not know. They don't know who they are. They think they black. They think they black, Miss Brenda. Mm -hmm. They think they African American. He says they what? Does not know. They don't not know. Come on. My people does not consider. Now, brother, Brenda, Miss Brenda, you walking down the street right here, you don't even consider that you don't even know your nationality. Because you think you're black. Brother, you're going over here. You don't even consider. The Bible is a true book. It says you don't even consider what your nationality is, who your God is, where you came from, what is your purpose on this earth. You don't consider that thing. You think our purpose is to look, 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 look at the church. Look behind you. This is a church, a place that you're supposed to be able to go and get the righteous medicine of God to clean yourself up. Why we got people sleeping on the steps? Look at it. Bring it up. We got Yo. people sitting on the corner of the church smoking weed, drinking liquor, getting high at an establishment that is supposed to be for the people. That's because we don't consider who we are. Read it again. That's right. The ox knoweth his owner. God said a damn ox. He knows his owner. And the ass his master's crib. And the ass. You can take a donkey 20 miles away from him. Come back tomorrow where that donkey will be at. He'll be right back here. He knows how to get home. But Miss Brenda, you don't know how to get home. Brother, you don't know how to get home. You don't know where your home is. What is your homeland? Get that. What is your homeland? Where is your home? Is Africa your home? No. Huh? Where that sign at? Is it? Is Africa your home? Is this it? Is this your home? No? Do you come from here? Yes. Where? 
There's a whole bunch of damn old countries and cities in this place, right? Where do you come from right here? Because if you ask the average Negro, what's your homeland? They're going to say what? Brother, what's your homeland? Charleston, South Carolina. You see that? He said Charleston. I don't blame you, though. I don't blame him. You know what I blame? I blame us for breaking God's commandments, ending up in captivity, and the white man snatching our nationality from us. In Charleston, y'all got it the worst. You got it the worst. The slave ships docked in Charleston. Right, they docked in Charleston, South yeah, Carolina. You can't even mention the white man over there without them holding their head down. But that was one of the biggest slave plantations on this side of the world. Charleston. In fact, we went down there. The slave ship would dock and you could walk straight up the street to the market. But if you're looking at this right here, man, where, where would you come from, Miss Brendan? Do you know? No, because you would come from here, you would come from the northeast side, which is written in the scriptures. Read this. Galatians chapter 4, verse 26. This is your no. homeland. You can put that out. But Jerusalem, which is above, is free. It said, hold it back up. It said, Jerusalem, which is above, is free. Which is the mother of us all. Jerusalem is the mother of us all. So, what's your name again? Kevin. Kevin, you just learned two things, three things real quick. One, you just learned that you ain't black. You're an Israelite from the tribe of Judah. Nice Miss Brenda, you learned the same thing. You're not black. You're an Israelite from the tribe of Judah. Two, your homeland is Jerusalem. That's where you come from. This is, we migrated from the uh, uh, northeastern part of, uh, of this continent all the way down to the bottom of it. Right. Running from Roman white man persecution. They persecuted us and killed millions of our people. Right. That's how we ended up here. You can put this down. Read that one more time. Galatians chapter 4 verse 26 Come on But Jerusalem which is above is free Which is the mother of us all What's your homeland? Jerusalem. What's your homeland Miss Brenda? You see how easy it is? This is real easy But why the pastor in this church ain't been telling us this? Right. Why for all these years we haven't learned That we're the people of God Right. Give me Deuteronomy chapter 7 real quick Why haven't we learned this? Because they're not set up To teach our people who we are if they were set up to teach us who we are, why in the hell they let all these people just sleep on? Why not bring them in the building? Why they let them sleep out all their luggage outside? Right. If they were for us, why is there stuff outside on the ground? Bring it out. If they were in a position to help the people, why does the people have to sleep on the steps? Bring it because out. Because they're not here to help you. Yes, bro. They're here to get that money and go ride riding them Rolls Royces and live in them mansions. Read what you got. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 6. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. You, from the tribe of Judah, from the 12 tribes of Israel. God said what? The Lord hath the Read Lord. Read it again. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. God says you are a holy people unto him. Do, do holy people live like this? Does the people of, why in today's time does the people of God have to live like this? Teach. Why? Why do we, if, if we're the people of God, if you're the son of God, if you're the daughter of the most high living God, why do we live like this? You mean to tell me God ain't got a place for us? He chose, read it again. For, the, for thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. Come on. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee. Stop right there. The Bible just said in God's word, it said the Lord thy God has chosen thee, has chosen us. So you mean to tell me God chose us, but we got to live like that? Bring it up. God chose, we ain't choose God. God said he chose us. So if God chose us, Kevin, why do we live like that? What is the reason for us living like that? I know you don't know, but guess what? We're going to show you why we got to live like that right there. That's Read on. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. Above all. What? To be a special people unto himself. Come on. Above all people that are upon the face of the earth. So if I got to sleep on the church step, am I above all people on the face of the earth? Because I know I can go right down the, the street right here and probably run into a, a, a so-called white man living in a nice, great, big old house. So God chose me and my people, but we got to lay our, our, our comforters down on the step. No, 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 no. You're going to find out why we got to do that today. Read. For, the, for thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. Come on. The Lord thy God has chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. Uh -huh. Above all people that are upon the face 
of the earth. So if God chose us to be above all people on the face of the earth, what happened? Because if we rulers, if we're supposed to be ruling over the people, ain't no damn way I'm going to be sleeping on the church step. Let me show you what happened. Get Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 15. So God chose you, right, Kevin? So, so. Miss Brenda, God chose you, right? God chose us, right? What happened? We about to find out. Deuteronomy chapter 28. I know you're looking around because you got to get me some Miss Brenda. But guess what? Where you about to go, you ain't going to hear this information right here. What I'm trying to show you is that the kingdom of heaven and our rulership and ownership of this earth is in our hands. But we got to take it. We got to take it. It ain't going to come just because we want it. We got to take it. Read what you got. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 15. Come on. Bring it out. But it shall come to pass. And thou will not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Hear what God say? I chose you, Kevin and Brenda. But if you don't listen to my voice, read. To observe. To do all his commandments. If you don't do all these commandments, because I told you, come on. And his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses. All these what? All these curses. I said, I chose you. But if you don't do what I say, what? All these curses come on. shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Now we're going to show you the curses of what happened to our people. Because after God chose us, you know what we did? F that, God. I don't want to do that. Turn, turn our back. God, I know you chose me, but they doing something else over here. I won't go do that right there. Give me verse 32. You don't find out why we got to sleep on the damn church step. Read. Verse 32. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. What's that called? Read it again. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. What is this called? Thy sons and thy daughters being given to another people. What is this called? Bring it out. What's it called, Kevin? No, no, no. If you got kids? Do you got kids, Miss Brenda? If I take Miss Kevin, if I take Miss Brenda kids, if they in Africa, we just showed them. They in Africa, right? Miss Brenda, you in Africa. We're gonna do it, we're gonna, we're gonna have them, we're gonna imagine a little bit. Miss Brenda is in Africa. I go to Africa, I take Miss Brenda kids, and I bring her all the way to America. What is that called? Kidnapping. Okay, kidnapping. We getting somewhere. What was it called back then? If I came to Africa, took our children and brought them to America and put them in bondage, what is that called? Slavery. What's that called? Slavery. Read it again. Slavery. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. He says, thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. That is called slavery, Kevin. Right. That is called slavery, Miss Brenda. We have been put in slavery and we're still in slavery to this day. Yes, yes, right. Right. Read. And thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long. He says, you're going to see your children being taken away from you, and your eyes are going to look, and you're going to long for them all the day long, meaning you're going to want your children back. But guess what? You can't do nothing. Why? And there shall be no might in thine hand. God said, because I chose you, you broke my commandments, I'm going to give your children to another people, and there ain't going to be no might, power. There's going to be no power in your hand to get your children back. If DSS came and kicked the door in and took your kids right now, what could you do? Nothing. You ain't got no power. God said you have no might in your hand. Who is this talking to? It's talking to the 12 tribes of Israel, Miss Brenda. It's talking to the 12 tribes of Israel, Kevin. Talking about you. Right. It's talking about you. The Bible is talking about you and your people. Not some, uh, Sarah, Lord, come. we ain't doing that. Them days are over out. That sucking and jiving crap is done. Right. We must learn who we are repent and come back to God. That's right. the only thing that's going to get up off the damn church step. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.